My secret, just do something that ain't nobody ever done before, but make it sound like something that's always been there forever. Hello, welcome to This Filipino American Life, a podcast that explores the nuanced experiences of Filipinos in the United States at iba pa. My name is Joe Bernardo, and I'm joined by my fellow hosts, Ryan Carpio, Elaine DeLawis, and Mike, producer Mike. And we have a reoccurring guest here. Want Your to introduce yourself? Yes, Joey. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Come on. You have to do your own intro, remember? Oh, right. It's Curly. Yay. Happiness. Have you seen my uh, <laughs> my ankle bracelet? Because <laughs> <laughs> my parole officer is here. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you had a whole weekend to yourself, Yeah, exactly. Joseph. Anyways. <laughs> so did Mike. I know. It was a nice weekend, huh? I mean, I suppose. <laughs> Lots of uh, playing Zelda and getting drunk. <laughs> there you go. All right. Yeah. Like, happen in weekend. <laughs> so, guys, it is. Oh, guy and lady, sorry. It's our 100th episode. <laughs> sorry, that was a little oh loud. Oh, my God. Pew, 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 pew. I was going to try and do that a hundred times. My finger hurt. episode. <laughs> we reach the century mark. <gasps> Holy crap. Oh my God. We're old. We are so old. Oh <laughs> we my God. are, but not yet. <laughs> well, congratulations. High Yay. fives. Thank you. High, fives, High all fives all around. High fives all around. High, High five. fives. I think that's awesome that we, I would have never, wow. How many years have we been doing this? Three. Oh my God. Three and a half. Three and a half. half. Yeah. That's, that's pretty awesome. Cool. Congratulations. Oh. You guys have covered a lot. And, and of thank you f- to the listeners too for sticking with us. 100 yeah. episodes. Yeah. Speaking of our listeners, who are who are our tea pals of the episode, Elaine? I thought we were going to have one cuz we're going to talk no, about I know. Oh. But there are tea pals of the episode. Oh, our tea pals are our Patreons. <laughs> yes. Yes, so all of them. All, all of, of our them. Patreons. I got sidetracked and got panicked <laughs> even though we, we talked about this before we hit record but that is the magic of t-pals 100 episodes 100, so. episodes. Yeah. 100 episodes so so far we've had how many like 80 something patreons throughout the throughout yes yeah throughout throughout um that have come and gone and come and gone but they keep coming back and we appreciate everybody who has contributed to our patreon your doll hairs have helped us <laughs> produce this show and um, and give you all this amazing content. And seriously, like we, we love doing this. And so the fact that you guys contribute uh, to us being able to continue it is really, really awesome. To all those that started early on um, from the amounts little as a dollar to amounts as much as a million dollars. Uh, we haven't found the million dollar one yet, but, <laughs> but you know, Was we're waiting there? for you. Yeah. <laughs> and if you are on a Patreon or have been a Patreon in the past, come back. Yes. Or join. Join Baby, the community. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> you got like, some cool perks. Uh, one of the cool perks is you got to, uh, we ask questions of our Patreons and That's right. they, they uh, give us answers, which we, uh, uh, I guess repeat on mm-hmm. the on the uh, on the podcast episode. So, for example, I uh, we threw out a question: What was your favorite like moments of the our T file so far? And we have received a few emails and a few voicemails. Actually, just one voicemail. But uh, we received the email. One of them is from Leroy David, uh, and he says, "Hello, T file fam." Congratulations on your 100th episode. A couple episodes that are my faves include uh, T-File Talks Voice Acting with Eric Bauza and Eric ba- or Earl Bailon. Sorry. Um, as a f- cartoon fanatic, Bauza is superbly entertaining and passionate with his craft. Our Pinoy Mel Blank. That's cool. Aww. Yeah. Right? Shout out to Eric Bowser yeah. being yeah. our Pinoy Mel Blank. It's, actu- it's actually one of my favorite episodes, too, yeah. just because of the, like, it, we were totally a radio, right? The sound, yeah. uh, like, it was just amazing to hear all those voices and reminded totally. me of you know, my childhood. And it continues on and says, um, he also likes Stockton's Little Manila. Uh, it was important, it was important, it, um, emotional and powerful. Love to Gail Romosanta and Dylan Delvo. Don Mabalan is in the heart always. Nice. So thank you, Leroy. Leroy, right? 
Yes. Leroy for uh, that email. And he's been a great TPL. Mm-hmm. He's the one that did the boy bow and girl mm-hmm. garlic illustration. Which is awesome. Which is hilarious. <laughs> um, and we have another email from Ben Sai. It's it's C. I think. C. Psy, C, I uh, see. I don't know how to say these Chinoy uh, names, but Ben Sai, si Ben C, C si Ben. Um, thank you for your email. It starts with, "I'd like to start off by saying a big thank you for the work you, that you are doing. I am but one example of the souls your content has impacted. It has been a lifetime of wayfinding as I explore the duality and sometimes dichotomy of being a second generation Chinese Filipino American in social, professional, and Filipino context." What your discourse reminds me is that the journey, while similar to others, is still my own. It is unique from anyone else's and equally valid despite my fervor or lack thereof in my Filipino-ness, Asian-ness on any given day. And he mentions a few episodes, um, Pinoy Basements with Eugene Cordero, uh, Filipino, Filipino Filipino-American slang, uh, Filipino-American gangs, Mm -hmm. and Reflections of My Family Slave, the Cthulhu one. Oh my gosh. Um, I liked his... He did that something really rad in that he gave us like his own interpretation. So uh-huh. Joe is the historian, the direction <laughs> setter, employer of so- the Socratic method. Elaine, the color man, provides the bring it home stories. Sometimes I don't always know where they are going, but she eventually <laughs> ties back in. And I don't know where I'm going sometimes, but I try to bring it back. So that is correct. <laughs> Ryan, you are the everyman, enables empathy and personalization of the discussion through his lens. And Mike, the band's basis, amazing ability to summarize and contextualize the nuance of the discussion, doesn't take the center stage, but when he does interject into the conversation, it is profound. Nah, nice. Pretty accurate. Nux. 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 And Sweet tweet. he gave us hip hop uh, like a uh, interpretation or reference. So Ben is relating us to Wu Tang, and Joe is Jizza, the genius. Mike, uh, Ryan, your method man. Uh, I he says that I am old, dirty bastard, which <laughs> I am so excited about. That's amazing. And Mike, you are Rizza. <laughs> and. I guess that's a correct assumption, but I know when we saw that, weren't you also very excited that you were told to be Riza? I guess. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, if I had to pick my favorite Wu-Tang Clan members, I would actually prefer mm, Jizza, actually. Or Method Man. I mean, if you don't get the references, I mean, yeah. Jizza is kind of like... Is there a West Coast equivalent to that? So it makes oh. sense because Jizza's the genius. He's like the cerebral He's the one, cerebral one. You know, he's, he's like... smart. He thinks of things in terms of like chess. Yes. Rizza okay. is like the one who brings it all together. Got it. It's like the producer and yeah. everything else. Uh, Method Man is kind of like he's the most charming man. one. The most charming you know? one, which is Ryan. Right. And Old Dirty Bastard is crazy. And unpredictable. I'm, and I'm crazy. All over the place. What's but, the NWA version? <laughs> okay, mean, never mind, never mind. Like your Suge Knight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we also have a voicemail from our T pals, voicemail. which is amazing. Cool. Uh, listen to this. Uh, hello, this message is for the crew uh, of the T pal podcast. Um, congratulations on your 100th episode. I hope you continue to keep doing what you're doing. Hey, what's up, guys? It's uh, Mitch Narito from L.A. Uh, really big fan of the podcast. Um, I really hope this is the correct number, because if not, this is going to be a very awkward voicemail on somebody else's phone number. Um, but I just wanted to say um, I've been catching up on all your episodes. I'm on episode 83 right now. Um Wow. Yeah, I, I, I'm really glad that you guys have episode 100 coming out. I'm trying to catch up before then. But I really enjoy just all the discussions and all the people that you guys meet. Uh, for myself, it's given me um, a stronger sense of my Filipino-American identity. Um, and that's why I feel that you guys, um, what, what you guys do for, for this podcast is really important just for the Filipino. Filipino community uh, in general and um, just keep doing what you're doing guys I can't talk I got mush mouth right now but uh, congrats guys happy 100th episode that's so cool I know Mitch Narito if you know him he's Donkey Doug Doug. from the good place yeah that's so awesome random reference 
uh, Vince, graf- TFL graphic designer, shot Mitch's engagement photos. Oh, cool. Oh. Nice. Oh. So there's like... like Wait, and then isn't Mitch like uh, Malika's cousin or something? Yeah. Malika Garib, who we interviewed in D.C.? Cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah they're, they're so, family. Just just cool. Filipinos, you know, one. Narito. Narito nasi Mitch. Nasan? Narito. Narito. <laughs> oh, man. Cool. Sorry, this Ilocano speaker didn't get oh. that. I got it. Sorry. Narito <laughs> ako. Umi. No? no? Okay, sorry. Guys. Sorry. <laughs> okay, na namarito. That's not funny. That's Ilocano right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing. Girlie's laughing though. Shut up. <laughs> All right, so 100, we reached 100. it. Yes. 100. How do you feel about reaching 100 episodes? You know, it reminds me of like um when uh like TV shows reach like their 100th episode like in the man, I'm old. You know when like Family Ties reaches like a certain episode? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you are Family so old. Wow. Shana, na, na. <laughs> but like how about friends? But like, you know, even that's old. I know, but when they, they there's it's such a, like a milestone, right, to 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 do that. Yeah, and then and don't they usually do a clip show? Yeah, they do like oh they God. do like, "Oh, remember this time when we did this?" And it was like one of those like random episodes of multi-clip uh going back into the past so that's kind of neat hey joe remember this time yeah <laughs> <laughs> but we are gonna have a clip show are we yeah no wait seriously yeah. is that what we're doing yeah oh my god we're like tv that's awesome <laughs> for your ears yeah i know <laughs> although we should call it a lake show oh not a clip show <laughs> i just got that that was good. terrible <laughs> No, I, I gotta get props. That was that was good, but uh, thank you, Mike, for. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna go through some of our favorite moments, favorite episodes, milestones, etc. Uh, first, I want to ask you all, what's your favorite episode out of all the one hundred that we've made? Oh my god! <laughs> well, technically ninety five, but. <laughs> well, but as of this coming out, yes. one hundred. Yes. Oh my goodness, that's favorite a- episode. You have to pick one. To pick Only one. one. Uh, this one's hard. I always refer to the mental health one. Mental That's health. That's my favorite one. That is what one. It's episode first? two. Two. Yes. Yeah. Two. Yeah. yeah. Um. And every time someone asks me about it and asks the exact question, I always say that one because it introduces the conversation about mental health and Filipino Americans taking care of ourselves, our mental health, and it's. For me, like I've noticed on social media, there's a trend. Like there's a lot of people out there actually talking about mental health yeah. in the Filipino American community, yeah. mm-hmm. and um, the fact that we did that conversation at number two, mm-hmm. and now that we're at a hundred, I mean, it's like yeah. the growth is there. So yeah. that's that's yeah. We should revisit it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah we can have somebody else. On. Yeah, yeah. My favorite episode is uh, my family slave, the Katulong yeah. one. Oh, that's a that's good, one. good one. Yeah, I felt like. That's I don't know. I, I feel like that's very indicative and representative of who we are. Like we all have opinions. We're all super. You know, we're all smart, but we're all f- also funny. Mm-hmm. And then we get into the gray areas mm-hmm. that you know things aren't necessarily black or white. Mm-hmm. And I think with that episode, um, you know, we question you know that dichotomy, and we mm-hmm. talk about the gray in moral like morality. And how it affects us as Filipinos, Filipino Americans, and um, I just like that. It was my favorite. That's a good one, Mike. My, Ryan. Mike first. Um, I don't know. I, when I was thinking about this, I realized I was thinking about a lot of the episodes that I specifically produced by yeah. myself. <laughs> the um, ones where we aren't in it. <laughs> <laughs> Those are Mike's favorite. <laughs> well, I guess okay. So, so the, the the first one that came to mind was actually the 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 Veterans March one. Um, where mm. I was actually at the march interviewing oh, people. Um, and part of the reason that was one of my favorites is because it was actually created from the bits of something else that I was trying to make separately. So I was trying to like figure out creating kind of like a different kind of like maybe like offshoot kind of part of the podcast that was focused on kind of like, you know, going out in the community and just like talking to people. Um, and I could never like put it all together and make it happen. But I always appreciated TFL for giving us the space to kind of do that kind of storytelling Mm -hmm. because, you know, we all have different ways that we tell stories that we engage with people, Mm -hmm. you know, and that was a way that I wanted to, and I just didn't have a time to like really build it on my own, but because we're, I'm part of this team, it allowed me to kind of at least bring that episode to life, even though it was like, you know, in a completely different way that I had initially intended it to. Um, 
And the other one was like the Cinema Sala one. Mm. Because I, one. Yeah, and I just, and they're very one. different episodes from what we usually do. <laughs> <laughs> but they're like, yeah, they're very different because like, I think it just pushed us to like do something technically very different yeah. in general. I pushed you to do it. <laughs> okay, it pushed me. Like, Mike, do this, please. <laughs> but, the, but, but the other thing about the Cinema Sala one was like not just talking to our good friend Marie Jamora, but it was also like kind of seeing for the first time in real time what it what fans of our show were kind of you know feeling experiencing and would like wanted to kind of echo back to us because mm-hmm. the people who came out for that were not just folks who were there for Cinema Sala. It was like our friends and other people yeah. that just knew about us. And, you know, I wanted to connect with us. And so it made me realize it's not just us doing this podcast that we're just doing. Yeah. But that there's a whole like community out there that really kind of wants to be part of the conversation as well. I'm still bitter that folks didn't like folks like dark meat over white meat. But <laughs> that's true. Those people are um, wrong. <laughs> yeah, because it's delicious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. um, well, Ryan. OK, so I'm pretty nostalgic and I may have mentioned this to you all in the past, but our first episode is my favorite. Uh, if I had to pick Aww. one episode, I think outside of the content of Filipino American parents and, you know, we wouldn't be here without them, that context, I think it was such a, a good introduction to what this was all about. One of my favorite moments of that episode was actually never aired, but um, it was Joe uh, starting off and he, he got nervous. I think it was. <laughs> I, it, I still get nervous. Well, dude. I know, but it was. It was such. It, to me, that 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 um, the first time you do something, you know, we had been talking about it for a while, and the first time we actually got the episode down to to the point where it is a matter of just doing it and just starting it was really momentous for us. Yeah. And uh, to me, if I had to choose one, Mike got two, but. Um, <laughs> Like that, right? <laughs> oh yeah, you got two. That's why I said it. I go, like that. That's why I said one, Mike. Oh, um, got it. <laughs> but um, but if I had to choose one, that that would be it. Um, just just because it it meant so much to me that we were gonna do it, and then also I didn't know we were gonna get up to a hundred. And mm, you know, yeah. I'm a, I'm a pilot episode guy. I like the pilot episodes. It also goes to show like the quality that has evolved from our sound and and just even the way we interact. Uh, when yeah. you look back at episode one, it's kind of looking back at like the first Simpsons episodes on the Tracy Ullman show. Yeah. Or looking back at like pilot episodes of Seinfeld. And, and you are you know, old. I am, man. <laughs> but like, I'm that's sorry. true. But it's, always, it's, it's so always good. I'm, I'm very nostalgic, you know, I'm kind of like emotional when it comes to that stuff. So yeah. 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 You, were still, you were still getting comfortable with right. sound yeah. levels. Yeah. 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 We, were, we were all nervous. We were all laughing really loudly. But we were also just super nervous about like, do we sound okay? Are we live? <laughs> you know like we're not live you know so. well, i mean at one point i even stopped the recording because it's like man this is getting yeah. really heavy <laughs> yeah and is this okay that it's getting really right. heavy and like we're like no don't ever stop recording also yeah but no you yeah. know this is the kind of conversation we want to be able to have we right. want to have a very honest yeah. you know insightful yeah. space yeah and so i'm appreciative also like kind of like what mike said like t as a as a group and now as a sort of this entity has allowed us to tell stories um yes. of our our own lives but also others so yeah i think that's really neat yeah, that's why I like also like it's very collective. Like we yep. bring in a lot of people who are very are experts in their subject mm-hmm. and uh, you know, they school us on so many things. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Speaking of schooling, my favorite episode was Wait, who asked you? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I'm kidding. Oh. I'm kidding. <laughs> hey, stop. Put that down. Rolly's holding a lighter right Don't. now. I think Joe should back away. <laughs> Don't make me Joseph. Okay, go. What's your favorite episode, girly? I'm kill you. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to die. Oh. My favorite episode was Vegas. Ooh. with Which T- one? Tita Gloria uh, and Tita uh, Rosita. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't participate in that one. I was just in the room listening. I do remember And there that. was a point where I was like, yes. She was snapping yes, and clapping. Yes, <laughs> I, I love them. Yeah. I wanted I wanted to like, you know, work with them uh, more regularly because they were so great. I mean, they came from different sides of the political spectrum and, and their work at the end of the day was really to just make sure that people are involved and educated about being involved and how important it is to like be involved and have an opinion um, about 
how our government works, how our society is shaped, etc. So it was really, it was a really inspiring episode for me. And, um, you know, Tita Gloria and Tita Rosita are, are definitely two individuals that I would love to be to yeah. be when I grow up. Um, I think you will. In terms of their involvement. <laughs> Hanging out at supermarkets and, and <laughs> I know. passing out flyers, right? I'll do your grocery shopping yeah. with you while I talk to you about voter registration. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I do remember I do remember you snapping and clapping and I was like, that's girly in the background, slap uh uh clapping. So that was a that was a good one. Yeah. Cool. And now we set up some a few of our favorite moments. So uh, we're gonna uh look back at some of our favorite moments. And um first up is Ryan. Oh, Yes. Um, okay, so this is a. I, I'm I'm into public service and politics, and I think uh, politics is sort of inescapable. And so, some of uh, my favorite my favorite moments in the podcast is really talking about what being in America is. And I'm an immigrant, and understanding the political landscape of the United States. So, looking back. Uh, we did. You guys remember when we did the bonus episode about politics when we started talking right before the election of 2016, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and we, we were talking about like our parents and what their political affiliations were, and we're mm-hmm. all like, "Uh." I was kind of <laughs> nervous to admit that both my parents are like registered Republicans and 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 all that. But we were talking about politics in general and the hope that we had about the upcoming election in the United States because we were also reflecting about the elections in the Philippines. Yeah, and mm-hmm. Duterte was you know, the new president, et cetera. And we had pictures of Hillary and, and, and Donald Trump. Well, the clip that we are about to hear is post-election and how we dealt with the United States election in 2016 and sort of like, what do you do now after we found out that Trump won? And this is more of a deep kind of a reflection on, on as Filipino Americans, what should we be doing? And this is the clip. Yeah, uh, I I think you should also continue to support organizations that do do it, support campaigns Mm -hmm. that are currently going on, like um, the Dakota Access Pipeline, Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. Black Lives Matter movement, Mm -hmm. um, Asian Americans Advancing Justice. Yeah, this is not a once in four years kind of thing. No. No. No, 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 no. And it's hard work. It's it's hard work. It's supposed to be, you know. And, you know, to a lot of Filipino and Filipino Americans out there, just know that, obvi- you know, they're not. Trump is not necessarily targeting Filipinos per se, but it could easily happen. Yeah. Um, I mean, he did mention like Philippines and mm-hmm. uh, the pr- the people who come here, et cetera. But uh, really, actively targeting our community, it's not happening. But it could easily happen to mm-hmm. us. So we should just, you know. We need to help other people who are targeted. Like if uh, there is a Muslim registry, register yourself as Muslim. Yep. You know, mm-hmm. go there with uh, a rosary around your neck. Right. And just say, I'm Muslim. Yeah. <laughs> rosary, um, <laughs> scapular. Yeah. And then. Giant <laughs> <Jade> cross. <laughs> and, um, you know, climate change, that's a huge thing. And if Trump is thinking of hire or appointing a, a person some, who a doesn't denier, believe in science, that's going to affect the Philippines. Uh, way ahead of if it's gonna affect here in America, mm-hmm. absolutely. You know, Philippines is basically, or and the the global South is mm-hmm. the front lines of climate change, and, and they experience it's like super typhoons every year yeah. now instead of like once a decade. Exactly. So it's uh, they suffer the repercussions of climate change every yeah. day. Yeah. So yeah, donate to organizations, ACLU, Asian Americans Advance Justice. Joe so Bernardo Foundation. <laughs> <laughs> TFAL. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, just do what you can. Yeah. What about you, Mike? Any thoughts? Um, I think we just need to be vigilant. I think there's a lot of opportunities to stem a lot of the things that Trump could or would want to do as long as we don't let it slip past us somehow or we get, you know, we, we just get overwhelmed so much that we just stop paying attention. Um, there are things coming up, you know, there's, there's ballot measures and elections like almost every year. I mean, we have things that are happening locally that we need to pay attention to so that if things happen on a federal level, at least we as a community can kind of hold our own ground and support our 
communities. Mm-hmm. Um, and then obviously there's the midterm elections coming up. We need to pay attention to that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I agree. Like I think, you know, we've spent so long to try to build up these structures and organizations that have helped kind of support our, our, our communities when in times of need. And, and now more than ever, do we need to kind of really kind of invest in that, right. invest in our communities, mm-hmm. look out for each other, um, do whatever it takes to kind of weather the storm because, you know, yeah, it, it, when you look at the kind of the, the longer term history of the United States, it's not that this is necessarily an unprecedented kind of situation, mm-hmm. um, but the potential for its effects on a global global level, whether it's through climate change, uh, you know, military engagement, et cetera, mm-hmm. um, it's, it's probably bigger than it's ever been. And yeah. So it's up to us really to demonstrate that, you know, regardless of whoever is our leadership or quote unquote leadership, you know, in, in Washington, D.C., um, that we as citizens, and especially the state of California and places like Los Angeles, have a really you know large opportunity to kind of make an impact. But I mean, no matter where you are in this country, I think you know being silent is probably the last thing you should be doing right now. Yeah. Uh, so uh, part of the reason um, I chose this clip is because of how I think our podcast actually talks nationally, and how how um, how it affects us not just here in the states, but you know our parents who were born in the Philippines and. And how much of uh, a real time uh, kind of thing that's been happening in in this country to us, and how polit- how we can't really escape politics, and how T. Fowl kind of you know encourages us to talk about um, political awareness and and politics in general. So you know, it's weird listening to that like fresh after the election. I know we're so sad. We we're so sad. <laughs> <It> sounds so. <laughs> but everything is still like true, you yeah. know, like yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, you have to weather the storm. We're still in the storm, right? Right, and right. we're weathering it as yeah. best as we can. Yeah, I'm gonna do it through a cookie. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> so you have another clip of your favorite moment. Oh yeah, so I picked up a very funny um, <laughs> episode, um, and you know when being Filipino in uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, a lot, I have a lot of a diverse uh, group of friends who kind of reference my Filipino-ness to uh, Manny Pacquiao. And they love Manny in a very boxing-centric way. But one of the funny clips that we had was a, a story from Joe Bernardo. <laughs> it's funny. When I gave the punchline, I had major mush mouth. Oh, uh, did you? So that's why I had to say it again. Okay. But here you go. <laughs> Dude, there was one time where he um he was talking about there's a glove controversy right because he mm-hmm. i guess he wore a different kind of oh, gloves right, for right. the previous fight mm-hmm. and so for this fight he wore um uh cleto reyes gloves mm-hmm. right so it's a type of glove okay right and um they asked him about it on the during the post post uh post fight interview and he would say oh uh, yeah the about the gloves uh i like using the the clitoris grub <laughs> I was like, wait, 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 what? He did not. <laughs> yeah. I That's not to, what he said. Dude. Did he really? <laughs> dude. Like, I had to, I had to, like, oh, I was like, what? Please he, put what did that he on our vlog. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, you know, uh, 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 before I used the other glove, but uh, this one, I like the clitoris glove. <laughs> Enunciate, Manny. No. <laughs> clitoris. <laughs> oh, my God. I, th- I, you know, it might be on YouTube somewhere. Oh, I'm check it out. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, oh my yeah. God. Clito Reyes was clitoris. <laughs> Too many. <laughs> so, I, to me, that was just one of the, the funniest moments. I think I didn't expect it the, when Joe told me the story or told us the story. I didn't expect to hear that. And it was just utterly hilarious. And I think you can hear all of us laughing in the background. But it's also like, you know, Joe's ability to do accents and... and uh, <gasps> So uh, I don't know. I don't think we were s- s- unhinged or anything like that, but I thought that was pretty, pretty, uh, pretty cool. I like that one. Yeah, that's a good. <laughs> <laughs> I, still, I still laugh about it every day. <laughs> All right, Mike, you have some favorite moments that you picked out. Could yeah. we uh, talk about the first one? So, and uh, I think Gurley basically referenced the episode that this is from, um, but it's when we were talking to uh, the two women in Las Vegas. Um, Tita uh, Rosita and Tita, um, what was her? Gloria. Gloria. Um, and there was just this like one minute section. I forgot which one of it was that then was was telling the story, but like it like the span of a minute, basically like laying out the case for why you know we need to get out there and be engaged, why our votes matter, 
um, you know, why representation is important, all those things. And, uh, you know, I mean, I think like that entire interview, as you as you referenced, Gurley, I mean, just, you know, feeling like, wow, like, you know, I guess I guess part of it's I'm not used to having folks from other generations be that passionate politically, you know, to be that engaged and care that much about kind of the way that we show up. Um, and just to have somebody from previous generation really kind of just, you know, make that case in a way that like, you know, I wish everyone would hear and would follow, um, just made me really like, you know, really happy and really excited. Um, and I just wish my parents would feel the same way. (laughs) Then we all, (laughs) (laughs) but yeah, that's, 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 that's the clip that I have picked here. Cool. Anyway. I said, because I know for a fact that the Asian Pacific Americans, especially the Filipino Americans, are the largest in Mm -hmm. that state, and they need to be engaged. Mm -hmm. I said, and if you don't engage folks who look like you, Mm -hmm. talk like you, speak like you, act like you sometimes, I said, you're never going to get anywhere. So it was really our... Our, mm-hmm. you know, our start of really engaging, and uh, you know, I understand what you're saying about apathy, and maybe some t- the, the what we needed to change was you know, the mindset of folks, especially the elders coming mm-hmm. over here saying, yeah. "Oh, what's the use? Mm-hmm. It's mixed. It's 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 cooked anyway. I yeah. mean, it's, yeah. you know, it's a done deal. My one vote won't count." And you know, our struggle is to uh, let them understand yeah. that your one vote. And your one vote, and your one vote, and mm-hmm. your one vote is ten votes. Yeah. So that's ten votes. Elections have been won by five votes. Five, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. if you really care about how long you're going to stay here and how good your life is going to be here yeah. and what's going to happen to your children, you better vote. She's awesome. That was Tita Gloria. Gloria. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing having those folks. How do we find yeah. them again? Uh... It was friends of friends. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, we, was, I knew them by reputation. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, they, they were pretty well. I, I feel like we had met Tita Gloria mm-hmm. in during DC. A DC, DC trip. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So your second clip, Mike. Oh yeah, my second clip was from the Eugene Cordero episode, which huge. I mean, uh, the, obviously the most standout thing was the whole thing about Filipino basements. <laughs> 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 um, Cordero Nanjos. <laughs> Didn't we already do this? We, we did. That episode. Different episode. This is an episode? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was. Because of his uh, name. <laughs> what other Corderos do we know? <laughs> Cordero Nanjos. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, but no, I mean, like, you had asked him something about, like, rep sweats, and I think, like, we had kind of, like, didn't explain it very well, but, like, he went down kind of this path of just telling about, you know, him just kind of feeling like whether or not he can represent and, like, the, 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 the awkwardness and nervousness that comes with kind of being Filipino in a space in which maybe you're not necessarily accepted as Filipino for whatever reason. So I thought that was really kind of interesting and funny. Do you get the rep sweats? Meaning like... <laughs> <laughs> I still do don't know get, what that is. <laughs> oh, sorry. You get nervous when you have to kind of represent like a, um, a, a community. You know what? I I only... Um, I still get the the rep sweats I've never heard it. Oh, I, I, love make it. Sure. I love it. I get I the it. meat sweats. Sure that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get the meat sweats All after a Brazilian bar, like one of those Brazilian places, <laughs> or Korean barbecue. Yeah, Korean barbecue yeah. that'll happen. Um, other than that, not so much. Uh, rep sweats happen. You know what? I I get them every time. Um, somebody. Well, every time I say I'm Filipino, if it's an older person, they look at me as though I was wrong. Because I like I might not look yeah. as Filipino like, as you sure? Oh, yeah, like are you sure? So then they give me the I are you sure look, which gives me the rep sweats. Because I'm like I, I can't tell you anything. I can't go like surprise, you're right. <laughs> and you know, and then when they speak Tagalog and I have and I don't yeah. and I have to go I have to let them finish and then go, Oh I don't and no then idea. they give me the look of No you're not No you're not <laughs> again yeah. and then I walk away. It's just like it's just it, like, that's what, that's what, the tough stuff. Like, what? Nice, Eugenia Cordero. He's awesome. He's our like new best friend. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of best friends though. We do. Yeah, but he's he joined the the crew. Yes. Of the best friends, especially when we have food around. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so some of my favorite moments. Uh, one is a funny one, and one is uh, I guess a more serious one. Um, you all know I like to do dad jokes. Yes. And I I think I was I the most listening. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so I like to do a lot of dad jokes and I I am most proud of this one. Oh. This is my favorite one. Oh, I'm excited. 
What was your favorite shows? I know it's hard, but maybe uh, like back then. Yeah. A team. A team. A team. <laughs> 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 A team. <laughs> I love that show. I don't know why they're laughing at you. A team was awesome. It was so cool. I watched the BT version. The E team. <laughs> oh my god. That is the worst dad joke. <laughs> that is so good. That is so good. Right, it's cracking up so bad. Because I was like thinking like there's a B T version. <laughs> Yes, the E team. <laughs> oh my goodness. Good job, Dad. Good well job, done, Dad. Joe. Well done. Um. <laughs> so yeah, that was I liked it because it was so like out of left field. Like I heard A team, I was like, oh dude, I have a joke about that. <laughs> and then like you all thought I was serious and it was a total joke. Like I'm like, oh sometimes, shit, there's a B team version. Because <laughs> sometimes you guys look at me, it's like, okay, joke's coming, right? Right, 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 right. But this one I totally caught you guys off yeah. guard. Appreciated, so appreciated, Joe. <laughs> oh yeah, the E team. <laughs> so my second uh, clip I want to share with you is um, our conversation with Karen Tongson. Cool. Yeah, I love Karen. She is. Uh, awesome. She's like a genius. She's our other best friend. <laughs> she's like one of my academic idols. Um, and we were talking about kind of cultural appropriation, and that term is always kind of like thrown out there. Um, but she explained it in a very like. Um, concrete and like a digestible way. Mm. I really liked it. So actually, I wanted to switch gears and talk about uh, this whole discourse around cultural appropriation that mm-hmm. kind of just gets thrown out there so uh, liberous. Another liberally. easy topic. Another easy topic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, is it is cultural appropriation like an appropriate term to use when? You know, they're when people are uh, accused of being of appropriating culture. <laughs> um, where do you draw the line between cultural sharing and yeah. quote unquote appropriation? Yeah, I, I think that I mean, it is a difficult question, but I think for me, the easy way to parse it is to think through several steps. First and foremost, is like who is expressing their desire for or or trying to channel another culture Mm. what is the power dynamic between that person doing that and the culture that they are sharing with or appropriating right Mm. and so uh you know for me it's really key and crucial to think like if these if people who are doing that already have like a profoundly messed up power dynamic or colonial dynamic or a power like systemic racist dynamic going on with this other culture that they have to think very much about what it means to tr- to want to participate it with it and in it mm-hmm. to participate with is different from being mm-hmm. it right so mm-hmm. so that's the other layer of it too it's sort of like especially this this conversation has come up a lot in the food world mm-hmm. and about mm-hmm. like you know you you don't need to be you know do you need to be a person from this culture in order to make its food mm-hmm. obviously not obviously it's the same thing with scholarship do you need to be you know a british person to write about british literature no right Mm -hmm. but what is your relationship to it how are you forging it is it that and to whom are you giving credit for it right so Mm -hmm. it's also like that's the 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 other layer for it is that uh that that of assessing whether or not this is really happening is like are you benefiting and are you giving anything back to the community that you're benefiting from you know, and, yeah. and do you, and what is what is the level of sincerity of your engagement with that culture? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's one thing like to I don't know. There's this really f- fucked up thing. Am I allowed to curse on yes, this show? Yes. Okay, fuck shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know that like you heard about the miso horny like restaurant. Yeah. Oh, yeah, two yeah, yeah, white yeah. guys yeah. like I'm just also I'm just sort of like okay well that's a str- and then and it's supposed to be like an Asian fusion place or something yeah. right I'm like are you fucking kidding me <laughs> yeah. like that is that is cultural appropriation yes. yeah. I think that you know it, it gets a little dicier when you have different people who uh, you know I mean, I, I like people have talked about this a lot with Rick Bayless and his yeah. his Mexican food, and like you know, he was an anthropologist when he learned how to make. I feel like that's a little dicey that mm-hmm. situation. Yeah. And part two, though, because it's like you know he he's benefiting, he's profiting. How much has he given back to the communities from who learned yeah. these skills from, and to the people, to his uh, staff who are uh, largely you know Latino, Latino mm-hmm. uh, Latinx, and so it's just. Um, yeah, so I think the phrase definitely gets thrown around a lot, but um, 
you know, my, my my wife is Jewish, and recently someone was like, "Oh, we love celebrating Hanukkah," and she's like, "Oh, are you guys Jewish?" Or, and she's like, "Oh no, it's just like cool to the lights and stuff." And so she felt <laughs> weird about that. You know, she felt a little weird yeah. about that. Um, yeah. That's something I have said. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, she's like, "I feel a little weird about that because you know, people like, and it's cool like to celebrate, you know." other holidays and things like that but you, like I think it's important also to demonstrate some actual yeah. awareness and learning and yeah. depth yeah Karen was awesome yeah. and I, I think that clip especially is just indicative how like how, how much knowledge we have in our communities and I think uh, we like to share that in TIFA yeah which is nice so Eileen yes you have some favorite moments that you picked out yes one of my favorite moments is from episode 91, TFL Talks Paleontology. <laughs> so we talked about dinosaurs so with somebody so who's not an expert on dinosaurs. Okay. So <laughs> There's no dinosaurs. <laughs> so Gabe, hi Gabe. As we record this, it's like Dinosaur Week at the National the Natural History Museum. Oh, I didn't and know. Gabe is there right now with his museum. Uh, and he's there with a puppet of a dinosaur. And he went recently on digs for dinosaurs. Oh, okay, so he does know dinosaurs. So okay. <laughs> in the context that I knew him online and social media, he was always doing stuff with dinosaurs. Got it. So in my mind, I said, okay, he's a paleontologist. It's uh, about dinosaurs. So we talked um, about dinosaurs in the intro and then didn't talk about it anymore in when we interview. But I think this intro has one of the funniest things that we've ever done. And um, in my opinion, it always makes me laugh. So, uh, I wonder if there are Filipino dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be... I bet there is. We don't know. What if there's some form... Because we just Brother watched... Brother Dino. <laughs> <laughs> Mang Dino. <laughs> Manangsaurus. Oh, my God. Oh my Titosaurus. God. <laughs> Tita Terry. Terry Dactyl. <laughs> Tita Terry, pterodactyl. He's my new favorite dinosaur. <laughs> Tita Terry, pterodactyl. I love you, Ryan. Thank oh, you. That was awesome, Ryan. That was so good. I'm only mad I didn't think about it. <laughs> so a little, a little behind this, look behind the scenes. But usually when we record episodes and do interviews. Um, we sometimes, well, most of the time we do the intros afterwards so we can make sure that we're contextually tying together <laughs> the things we talk about as we lead into the interview. Yeah. This is one of those moments like, where we... What? We don't do it sequential? <laughs> this time we did the intro first. <laughs> right. It's like, oh my God, we're going to talk to this paleontologist and talk about Jurassic Park and all this stuff and did that. And then, hey, don't, and then we don't. No. And then at the end of it, we're like, do we record the intro? And I say, and no. And we're like, no, screw it. Screw it. We're going to own it. Because we had some good jokes. We're just going to own it. that's one of them. <laughs> So that's why it's one of my favorite moments. <laughs> <laughs> and your second one. It's also from a Vegas show. Nice. It was with Michael and Lynn Araj. Oh, yeah. Araj or Araj? Or Araj. Araj. I remember he's like, because it sounds oh, like, like Mirage. Yeah. Oh, oh, Mirage. Oh, I went Mirage. He's really cool. We actually text. Oh, that's great. I'm yeah. glad you have a new best friend. I know. Like we, we talk Parker about pal. Poker pal. Yeah. Poker pals. Talk and so um, I'll just let you play it because, and then I'll, yeah. So, uh, is it true that you can, it, it doesn't matter what cards you're dealt, is that you could just read somebody's face and that's how you can win? So, if you watch a lot of poker uh, in movies and this like like in 007 yeah. or um, rounders rounders is a good <laughs> it's a good representation but still it's a little bit over the top just yeah. for entertainment entertainment purposes but um, a lot of my like physical tells there aren't really too many unless you have a real guy who's like twitches or something yeah. every time he has a good hand or does certain things or twists an oreo <laughs> or an oreo that's right <laughs> which doesn't happen by the way <laughs> is that what happened in Rocky? yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> teddy kgb <laughs> What's the I, line, guys? <laughs> on the gambling episode, I heard you uh, reciting lines. I think yeah, I, yeah, I, don't, I think do it went past people. Line. I don't even do know. It, do I it, will do splash it. the pot <laughs> oh, whenever it. the fact I please. <laughs> What's the one? Pay his pay, pay that, that man money. his money. <laughs> <laughs> we did it in unison. Yeah. You can replace that with the Filipino guy and it'll be something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, 
wait, do it, do it in a Filipino accent. Hey, that man, his man. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Oh, man. We should totally make a rounder spoof <laughs> totally, of just yeah. Filipinos. <laughs> totally can happen. <laughs> yes. So I love that episode. Straight up. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's so ridiculous. I've seen that movie like a hundred times. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's one of those good cable movies yeah. that you watch. So it came out on cable and I, and I actually, I just sat through it. And the whole time I was like, this is really happening. Yeah. <laughs> And then um, pattylapel.com, they put out a pin, and the tease of the pin when oh, it yeah. first came out on Instagram was just KGB's hand in an Oreo. Yeah. And I was like, oh shit, oh shit, it's going to be a rounder's <laughs> pin. And then the pin came out, and it's KGB. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Have you ever been to a poker table where someone brings a, a, a box of Oreos? <laughs> I'm going to do that now. Oh, <laughs> I've never done it. But now that you, you say it, I'll be it's like, like a oh. big show of un- <laughs> yeah. like doing Every time I'm in a hand, I'm going to twist it before I make you, like, an action. You listen to it. <laughs> <Yeah>. Someone, <laughs> like, <"No." laughs> someone's going to look at you and say, pay that bad this I one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It's so, like speaking like a fake Russian accent, oh, people are yeah, so no, confused. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, wait, what? Dress in a jumpsuit. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan, that's your Halloween costume. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> so we don't only have favorite moments. We also have some bloopers we Uh-oh. like to share with everybody. Oh, bloopers. What? This has never been heard. I've never on heard the T-Fell this. Air, uh, T-Fell, um, air, or T-Fell, uh, podcast. Podcast may have not heard it but you sure did it i probably did some of them but oh my god so <laughs> let me start with the kind of the, gives you the context so this first blooper is when uh we were interviewing uh christine balance uh-huh. and uh gary and usually mike counts us down right yeah. and this time he had to he counted down from 10 for some reason <laughs> right and <laughs> He did it with his hands, but it got all mangled. So like, <laughs> you could understand like what was like the what what number he was on because his hands were all mangled. Uh, so this is the blooper from that. Starting. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Mangled hands. <laughs> dude, look at his hands, dude. That's, that's tough. He's almost start from the middle. <laughs> oh, how did you lose count on ten, dude? <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. No, no finger. Ten, ten, six, five. Starting, starting. My glasses are steaming. It's starting, starting now. <laughs> oh my god oh that was a good one yes yeah, so oh that's our first blooper goodness. that was from like episode four or something yeah, yeah. and then we called it gangster hands and yes. we, from that <laughs> point <did>. on <laughs> and then you can't see this but like for a good while every time mike did it we would also do it back at him <laughs> <laughs> do you even know why i do that though like why? from wayne's world yeah, from wayne's world <laughs> <laughs> like, literally. Oh, this, this, like, i don't know how they do it in like the real oh, production yeah, yeah, yeah. studios <laughs> But in Wayne's world, he would count down into yeah. you know, his hands. And then yeah. do this. It's like, you don't have to say two and one. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like. <laughs> <laughs> you dated yourself, dude. Yeah. Okay. It no, it's literally from Wayne's world. It's yeah. literally from Paw Patrol. Did I date myself? <laughs> 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 All right. Here is the second clip. And we like to uh, do impromptu, um, whatchamacallit, uh, ads. So when every time we have to do an ad, we, <laughs> we just make it up on the fly. Right, and uh, usually it's not very good. Right? But if you want to buy an ad, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah for an sure. An example of what you might get as a blooper. There's a there's a process, is what we're trying to say. <laughs> so here's the second blooper. All right, ready? Sure. Hey guys. What's up, Elaine? Hey, Elaine. Do you consider yourselves to be arts art patriot patrons? <laughs> Sure. <laughs> Whatever the second one was. Patrons. <laughs> yes. Um, how would you be an arts patron? Do you like contribute? Do you subscribe? What do you do? I bought a Picasso. You bought a Picasso. <laughs> <laughs> I bought a Potasso. Potasso? It's a potato head. I'm oh, sorry. It's from a... Uh, from <laughs> what? Wow. Stop. <laughs> it's okay, not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. All right, all right, all right, all right. 
asshole. I don't know. <laughs> no. Let's just talk about like <laughs> like supporting the show. Okay, okay. Yeah. Like, it's I'll, like easy. I think the arts thing kind of went. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. It's Mr. Potato Head with all this stuff <laughs> in the wrong places. <laughs> oh, like a Picasso potato yeah. head. It's from uh, what's that movie? Mr. Potato Head no, from, Toy yeah, from Toy Story. Okay. Wow, we're in so still rolling. <laughs> oh, we, right. oh, you are. <laughs> nice. This is right. awesome. In five, four, four three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> I bought a potato. <laughs> <laughs> so what the hell's a potato? <laughs> in the back, I'm like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> oh, All right. So this is our last blooper, and. <laughs> This is so embarrassing because it was for a it was for a jewelry company <laughs> called the Doctora Designs, right? So basically, it's a jewelry uh, aimed at people in graduate school, women in graduate school, graduate Hi, school. Angela, yes. Angela Chin. And they have like names of, um, you know, like uh, special Maestra or yeah. Doctora, yeah, yeah, on on the actual uh, on the jewelry. name plate of the jewelry, yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm going to play bits and pieces of it uh, right now. All right. So this is the commercial? Yes. Or, okay. Uh, commercial recording, five, four, three. Hey, guys. Hey, Joe. Hey, Joe. How are you doing? Good. Good. Have you... Have you <laughs> All right. Give it, give it a second. All right. Sorry. Hey, everyone. What up, Joe? Hello. What's up? Yo. Have you been to grad school? I have not been to grad school. I Thanks. Ha- I have. I graduated. You graduated. Sure. How about you, Ryan? Yeah. Or are you, Mike? <laughs> How about you, Ryan? I am a grad student of the streets. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you ask, Joe? No, because um, did you struggle in grad school? Yes, grad school school yeah. was hard. It was very hard. School, school, school. Was hard. How about for you, Mike? Yeah, yeah, it was difficult. <laughs> Streets were hard. Was I was in school for too long. Too long. Two years of masters and six and a half years for my good PhD God, program. Joe, that's a lot of school. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So then. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I so love jo- I love Ryan, <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so I I continue on. By the way, this took like eight minutes just to record, right? And it it's only for like a, a one minute, <laughs> a one minute uh, ad. And I'm horrible, right? Like I'm just uh, I'm bad off the cuff when I had to talk. So um, uh, so I fa- I basically talk more about the actual product and. And then then I go into, uh, I I think I mess up again. So here's the second part of that. That sounds deep. It is. What about me who didn't go to grad school? This jewelry line is not for Ryan Carpio. (laughs) 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 No, you don't have to go to grad school to enjoy this, uh, this, this jewelry line. You just have to be empowered by education. Nice. I'm empowered by education. Ryan, yes. I consider you a PhD of the streets. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Where can I find this? Well, you can go to Doctora Designs. Oh, shoot. What's the one? <laughs> <laughs> this is horrible. <laughs> this is just a practice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So I didn't even have like the, the website up to describe it. I was just going off the top of my head. <laughs> so I didn't prepare. Uh, but this last part of us recording it... Um, I started reading off like the names of the jewelry <laughs> and I accidentally named off like the description of it <laughs> instead of the actual uh, what was on the nameplate. So here it is. You can go on their website, doctoradesigns.com and check out their line of jewelry. It says stuff like uh, doctora and um, design <laughs> designs. <laughs> You're the worst. Sorry, I didn't have it up. That's why. <laughs> Sorry. Wow. This is going to take a long time. <laughs> no, Just no. first bit. No, that was, did you hear that? Gary <laughs> <laughs> was all like, wow, this is taking really long for you guys <laughs> in the background. You didn't hear that? Oh, 
<laughs> oh, I heard this. It's like crying right now. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So here's the rest of the clip. No, no, no. no. I, I'll start. Yeah. 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 All right. You want to do that last part again? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's go to doctordesigns.com and check out their products. They say stuff like best mom ever, blessed, chingona, uh, celebrate your truth, uh, extended. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> says doctora. <laughs> extended. <laughs> What is it saying? He's reading the description. <laughs> 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 I'm the worst, dude. Dude. Still rolling. It says stuff like extended. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Prolong your grad school experience by staying an extra year for extended design. <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> 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 All right. Oh my god! Oh my god. Oh. I've never heard those. You I, mean, I know we were. I was there, but like you know, like what is this like, extended? What warranty or something? It or? said extended bar oh. <laughs> because it was describing the actual, actual like piece. jewelry, <laughs> <laughs> like silver extended. <laughs> it can say things like free shipping. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm really bad off the cuff, <laughs> so you all know, and uh, we always do our ads off the cuff. <laughs> oh man, and that's why either Ryan or me have started doing those ads. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh my God, uh, this stomach hurts from laughing. Well, I mean, admittedly, I mean, all of this is off the cuff for me. <laughs> because I don't prepare at all. <laughs> hey, you and Ryan don't prepare anything. I do. Right? Like, Mike does. What are we recording today? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> there are times when I do that too. I'm like, huh? It's like, oh, we have a guest. <laughs> <laughs> Paleontologist, huh? <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about dinosaurs. It's like, I believe you, Elaine. <laughs> so that was our 100th episode, everybody. Yeah. It's been fun. It's been a fi- uh, wild ride. I know. It has been. Yeah. But I do have um, a little, I wrote a little something. What? Yeah. Is it For this special be- occasion. <gasps> is it? Is it a poem? It? Not really. It's not spoken word like you, <laughs> Mike. <laughs> hey, brown hands are <laughs> no. 100 episodes old. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, just a mini, just a couple paragraphs that I wrote. Oh, a couple paragraphs. <laughs> God. It's going to be eight more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Should I count you in? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a little something for that kind of describes what we do and uh, kind of our mission here in TFL. Cool. Okay. Is he already dead? <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me laugh when I'm trying to read this, please. <laughs> All right. From our humble beginnings back in May 2016, we never thought TFL would grow this much, this fast. And through the wall, th- uh, and through <laughs> I Looper. through the All wire. Right. All right. Through the wire, wire. through the wall. <laughs> We've done that too before. <laughs> and through it all, we have you to thank. Your support of our podcast for the past three and a half years has been instrumental in its growth and mission to share the experiences, issues, and stories of Filipino Americans. We have listeners here in California, to the East Coast, to the South, to the Midwest. Support has come from Canada, South Korea, the UK, Australia, and of course, the Philippines. We are proud to have inspired other podcasts and platforms in telling their stories and share their experiences. Being Filipino, Filipino-American, Filipinex, Pinay, Pinoy, or however you want to define yourself, is never simple. Identities shift and never, are never static, shaped by numerous factors. Many of us grew up with a lot of adversity for who we are, what we look like, and how to speak. Some of us, not so much. Some of us have no lot, a whole lot of our history and culture, while some of us do not. We are complicated. We are marginalized, yet we can also marginalize others. We love doing TFL because we get to explore us in whatever form that is, no matter how all over the place we may be. As scholars would say, we are an imagined community flung together due to geographic and historical circumstances. In many ways, however, 
we are very very real many of us here listening to this in this day and age share some similar experiences issues and stories we did not choose to be a filipino community but here we are the least we can do is learn from each other laugh with one another and try to make the world a better place in whatever way we can those in power mainstream society whatever have you already regard us as invisible we know that's not true but let's not be invisible to ourselves so yeah that's what i wrote acknowledgements is that that's nice that's nice yeah that's really nice i know i i have to say as a semi-outsider of this whole process um it has been really great to see um the whole podcast evolve um and for each of you to um like just get more comfortable in each of your roles in this project um and it's actually weird to call it a project because it feels like it has a much longer life Mm -hmm. than just you know the short-term fun thing Mm -hmm. i mean it is quite fun um but it's definitely uh, a really wonderful platform to talk about all sorts of things that come up um in being a filipino american and just figuring out how to navigate through this world yeah joe you succinctly put together put down to words like what our show is about and like that feels like uh our mission statement that mm-hmm. we've always been talking about trying to <laughs> that's a long mission statement <laughs> I mean, but you know la- yeah, yeah yeah i get it i get but it but yeah. it's there and um i appreciate this whole process just because like we've been friends for so long and like this w- monthly meeting with you all mm. i love that when we see each other it's always we always say it's been so long mm. and it's it's really been like maybe a month maybe mm. a month but like before we did this like we would see each other what mm. like once a year so i appreciate that this is probably the most regular committed thing that i have that i don't have to do um outside of like you know this is basically the relationship I have with you guys as a podcast. I look forward to, you know, a Sunday spending hours with you guys and knowing that this is part of my life. It just really is part of my life. Scheduling wise, et cetera, right? I go to church on Sundays and I know there are going to be some Sundays I get to spend with y'all. And I think that was, um, that's, that's kind of nice and understanding kind of what Gurley said that this is longer than a project. You know, this is not like a task you know, I think this is definitely something that comes from the heart and we put a lot of energy in, but also like it doesn't feel like that. And part of the reason it doesn't feel like that is because I think what we're doing is important. Um, and I appreciate all of you and Joe for those words. Um, I think it's just a testament to um, not only our strength, but but our vulnerabilities and our, our willingness to share that with the states or even the world. Yeah, I think. So it was a couple, like maybe a week ago, maybe actually from the record this, the date that we're recording this, um, we were at a wrestling match. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, were. we were because it's Elaine, and you know we were at bar bullet wrestling. club, you know, and and a fan in the audience just started yelling at us, saying like T-Fell, T-Fell, and was trying to give us red some vines. red vines, um, and I was just like, do you know him? And Elaine's like, I don't know, do I know him? And we were looking at him like, I think we maybe met him or something, yeah. but I mean like. This has happened to us in kind of random moments, kind of like in the past year or two, where people will just come up to us and be like, big fan of the show. You know, I'm really glad you guys are doing what you're doing. You know, and I, I guess I hadn't realized before we started doing this that there was a vacuum or maybe just like there was a need for things like TFL to exist. You know, because I think like because we're in the Philippine American community, we're involved in a lot of different things, but amongst all the, the amongst all of us, um, that it feels like there's a lot going on anyways, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, are we just kind of like adding to kind of like that milieu of things that are like part of our community, not realizing that there are spaces and places and people who don't connect with any of that. And maybe this is like their only connection, you know? And so like so much so that when we do these kind of things and do this these episodes that like when people hear it, I mean, it's kind of like, this is like that one thing outside of my family or out of my community um, that I get to really kind of think about my community, my people, or like what's going on in general. Um, and so... 
you know, I mean, it's, it's something that I'll never get used to that people will like, you know, will tell us that they're fans of the show or that they'll recognize us on the street or that they appreciate that what we do. But I appreciate that at least, you know, we're, at, we're, we're, we're adding to the culture in a way that I think um, hopefully will lead to more people doing the same. And I think seeing the explosion of just like more Filipino podcasts and more people just having these kind of conversations and really, you know, we talk about visibility and representation, all these other things. I mean, that's always going to evolve, shift and change. Um, but the fact that we're able to both, you know, talk about our culture and our community in a way that helps kind of memorialize that, but also add to it. Mm. Um, I think it's the greatest contribution all of us have made and that wouldn't be possible without all of you. So, so with that, I'd like to thank all of you. I want to thank all our audience members, our T pals, you all, I love your support and, uh, we couldn't have done this without you. Um, Salamat sa inyong supporta. And if you have thoughts about our hundredth episode and the milieu of T fell, because Mike <laughs> used that big word and Ryan looked it up and I was like, ooh, look at that fancy vocabulary. <laughs> um, you can email us at this Filipino American life at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at Ryan uh, 805-394. T fell. <laughs> 805-394-TFAL. <laughs> After 100 episodes, you still don't get it. <laughs> maybe in 100 more, yeah, you'll maybe. finally get it. We'll get the first three Make me learn numbers. it. Listen to us. <laughs> this Filipino American Life is produced by Michael Nailat. Our intro and outro music is by Roger Habon, a.k.a. 10.4 Raj. Resident reality checker Gurley Collado. Legal advisor Rianne Fajardo. And graphic design by Vincent Collier.